destroyed everything. All right, guys, we're back in CSS on Solo Learn. Position, mean, and layout. Uh, I'm going to learn a lot about this. I always get all this stuff sort of confused, so I apologize if I'm not super in, at de in depth. Where are my glasses? All right, well, I guess we'll, I'll just do it blind today. So display block basically um, cre treats everything as a block object. Uh, so you'll see here, one's on top of the other. Building blocks. Are the, set, the display. What value display property makes the inline element act as a blocking level element? Block. Cool. And then um, display inline. You kind of, as you can imagine, they all align in line. So just going to read this a little bit. Setting the display property of an element only changes how the element is displayed, not what kind of element it is. So an inline element with display block is not allowed to have other block elements inside of it. Okay. Uh, so if we want a block element display inline, we would put display inline as so. You'll do this a lot with like menus and uh, list items and things like that as well. Um, the text will not display as we display none. Uh, hides an element so it does not take up any space. Got it. So basically hides it. Um, makes element with ID and my style disappear. So if we don't want to see my style anymore, display none. And this in Angular, if you use Angular, there's an ng hide. Uh, this is what this is doing in the Angular. It's basically just hiding the, um, the data when ng hide is true. Um, on a side note. <laughs> the visibility property, you have hidden invisible. Uh, so this is a heading. The space above this area is empty because the visibility of the div is set to hidden. So you can hide things as well. Um, so the, the main difference between uh, display none and visibility uh, hidden is that it still has the, uh, it still withholds the space. Meanwhile, um, meanwhile, uh, Meanwhile, uh, the other one doesn't. Oops, I meant to hit hidden and visible. So visible and hidden are the main two properties of visibility. Uh, probably should just be true or false. Be a little bit easier. Positioning elements. I guess you can add to it later on, so that might be why they don't do something like that. Uh, also, CSS doesn't use booleans so maybe I'm just a moron, but that, that's how I think of it. Position static. So elements can be positioned using the top, bottom, left, and right properties. However, these properties will not work unless the position property is set first. Cool. Oops. Uh, <laughs> a, little, a little Final Fantasy for you there. Um... Paragraph with no position. This paragraph has static positions. So you'll see right here. You've set it static. You've also set top 30 pixels, right? Five pixels, color red. All right. Why is the static value you're using to make the element to make the element run in the natural order of the page? To make the element unmovable. Huh. Static. Let's, let's review static a little bit more. Position static by default. Control the normal flow. Not to make them unmovable, but to run in the natural order of the page. Position fix will make them unmovable. So this is fixed position elements are removed from the normal flow of your document and have fixed position elements uh, can overlap other elements, okay? So you're like hard setting it so that it always is there. So we're going to do position fixed here. Uh, we're going to have the top uh, be 100 pixels and the pixels from the left, so on the left here like so. Pretty cool. So relative positioning. Let's read the definition of that. The content of relative position elements can be moved and overlap other elements, but the reserve space for the element is still reserved in the normal flow. So basically you move it to a relative spot. You basically move it to a spot, but it'll still kind of adjust everything else about it. 
An absolute position element is position relative to the first parent element. Uh, absolute position elements are removed from the normal flow and can overlap other elements. All right. What is the purpose of relative value? It puts the element relative to the containing block. It puts the relative to normal flow. The element relative to the browser window. No, it's one of these. Uh, it puts it I don't. Th so it still contains the normal flow, which is what's confusing me. Which may be why I got this wrong. Yeah. All right. So I thought I might be answering that wrong. Because it puts it, but it still flows with the normal flow of the uh, HTML document. Now, floating is you float something to the right, meaning it goes to the right or it floats it to the left. So, for instance, this image is floated to the right with all the text uh, onto the left of it. Or So, you can float something to the right and the left. I think that's it. Yeah. Elements next to each other. Set the width. In this place, floating several elements, one or the other, float next to each other if there is enough room. So we float one to the left, float another one to the left. Uh, I'm not sure how it knows which one to float, but I guess it goes in the order of the flow of the document. So the property along with float is used, for example, to make the elements float side by side. So you have uh, the width as well. And then the clear property. Okay. It's been a while since I've touched the clear property. Let's review this. I used this recently to fix some CSS issues. Um, the clear property specifies the sides of an element where other floating elements are not allowed to be. So in float right, you see we float right here. You basically would have the clear property, which would then allow, tell like, look, man, only, only I can be here, or you need to be X amount of pixels away. If there's an element with the float property, which elements will be affected? The ones coming after that element, the ones coming before el that element. I believe, let's see, if I float that, it's going to be the ones coming before that element. Huh. Because it could be either. That's why I'm a little confused. Yeah. Let's, let's go back and review a little bit. Elements that come after the floating element will revolve around it. Okay, that makes more sense. Because, like... Uh, Alright, so it floats around it, the ones that are coming after. Okay. Use the values right, left, or both to specialize uh, where other floating elements are not allowed to be. Okay. Uh, probably none here, although let's go back and review. I don't, right, left, and both. Oh, they already had none. Whoops, I didn't see both. <laughs> All right, so there's both. Uh, both is used to clear floats coming from either direction. So maybe you don't want things floating. You can use both saying, look, don't float anything around me. Uh, the clear property is used to reset the settings of the web page, clear styles of it, clear browser cache, take an element off the floating group. There we go. And finally, the overflow property. So what do you do when things are overflowing? Um, as discussed earlier, every element on the page is a box. Sometimes that box overflows. Um, um, if the height of the box is not set, the height of the box will grow as large as necessary to accommodate the content. So you see our div here, we have various colors like so. The CSS overflow property specifies the behavior that occurs when an element's content overflows the element's box. All right. There are four values for the overflow property. Visible, the default, scroll, hidden, and auto. So if you want to create a scroll bar like this, it's pretty simple using overflow. Um, fill in the blanks for horizontal and vertical lines. Uh, let's go back. Oops, let's go back real quick. And there's scroll hidden and auto. 
I guess scroll. Scroll does both. I wasn't sure scroll did both or not. But uh, so we're gonna set our overflow property here and scroll is going to allow us to create a vertical and horizontal line if there's any overflow. So um, you're more than likely to use overflow hidden where it just cuts it off like so. Um, although not always. So it really just depends on what you're using. So I believe it's auto. Oh, it's not auto, huh? Auto is overflow clipped. The overflow, the default value overflow property is visible. Okay. Cool. And the Z index property, the Z index. So just how like, imagine a graph, you have an X, which is horizontal, a Y, which is vertical. The Z is kind of the order of positioning, right? So you could kind of equate it to a height, like which one goes on top of the other. That's basically what the Z index does, like so. So um, red here has a Z index. It doesn't have any Z index. Uh, all right. So basically right now this is, the red is overlaying the blue because it was placed later in the HTML document. Uh, but if we want to change that, we could use the Z index. The last element will overlap by default. And then you can assign the Z index property. So maybe we wanted blue to show up, it would overlap that. Uh, thing to keep in mind, the higher the number, the prior, the higher the priority. It's not like one is greater than two, because that, that should always be the first one on the stack. No, 10 is greater than one, and therefore 10 will show up above one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. So one thing to keep in mind, only works on position elements. That means absolute, relative, or fixed. Cool, all right, let's do this quiz. If you have a negative value to the top property, which direction will it be moved? It'll be moved down? What? Really? Oh no, because top pushes, you push away from the top. Whoops, a little brain fart, it's gonna move up. Uh, so <laughs> when the flow property is used with the values of left or right, anything else that lives in the containing element will be moved down, flow around the element with the float property, cool. When the text needs more space than the dimensions of the box, the browser shows scrolls for the overflow property with the values of scroll and, uh, I believe it was display, no, position. When the text needs more space than the dimensions of the box, the browser shows scrolls for the overflow properties with the values of scroll and width. No? Oh, uh, shit. What am I think? So the overflow property would have been scroll and... All right, let's get a hint, guys. Let's see here. Auto? There we go. All right, a little hint. Assign the width of 500 pixels to the text element and enable fixed scroll bar. So if we want to do that, we're going to put scroll here for overflow, and we're just going to sign 500 px. So if the width or the height is greater than um, 500 and 200, thus it's going to uh, give us our scroll bars that we want. Fill in the blanks to make the blue box disappear from the page. So we're going to do fixed, absolute, and we're going to do display none. So, oh, excuse me. Display, wait. Position, why did I do type in fix? It's position. There we go. Cool. Uh, so you saw me stutter step uh, on a couple of these. Um, granted, uh, I've, I have mentioned that CSS is not my strong suit. I'm trying to get better, which is why I'm doing this slow course. I uh, hope you guys found it helpful. I'll try to explain what I could along the way. Thank you for watching. 
Uh, don't forget to check out our weekly Friday interviews with developers behind the code and uh, support me on patreon.com slash coding tutorials 360. I appreciate you all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding bootcamp, check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.